Welcome to our new lesson. In this lesson, we're going to study and learn another very exciting part of our machine learning project. So in this lesson, we're going to process and understand more the new features that we have added. We are going to learn about the different techniques for us to be able to deeply and intelligently scrutinize the different variables, new features that we have considered to be very crucial in our machine learning project. But before we continue, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button down there because we have great free data science lessons for you guys. We have mastering machine learning algorithm, the deep learning mathematics, natural language processing, the different data science algorithms, and a lot more. Don't forget to click the notification icon for you to be able to be updated of our new lessons. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share this with your friends. So let's get into our job. Before we continue with our new lesson, let me first review the different steps that we have undertaken so that you would be able to follow through our machine learning project. Okay, first we created our new environment, then we read the data. We then learned how to understand the data structure, and with that we cleaned the data, we identified the null values, and we also studied the different numerical distributions of our different variables. And then with that, we also considered identifying the different correlation values of the different pairs of the variables that we have. Then we also dealt with our outliers. And of course, we discussed how to process these outliers and when and when not to delete them. And then of course, we added the features and then we treated them properly. So we identified the different considerations, the different time elements of our new features. And also we laid down our expectations. And so this time, what we're going to do is that we are going to process and examine closely our new features. So let's get into this one. So let's remember that the intervals of our values is 10 minutes. So as you could see in here, we have 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, both for the hour average and for the weekday average of the features that we have added to our data. So we are not going to use this kind of interval, but instead we're going to use the different interval. The reason for this is that in as much as possible, what we are going to do is that we're going to lessen the impact of the noise or the noise itself. With that, we're going to consider the 30 minute interval and the one hour interval. So to do that, we're going to have this one. This is for the hour interval. So we have here an hour interval and what we do is that we are going to get the means. So again, let's remember this that we have a lot of values for every 10 minutes. So what we would do is that we're going to get the mean of that. So to clearly see, let's go to this one. Okay, let's go to these values. So as you could see here, right? So 21, 23, this is just an example. This is this is for T1, 22, 22.39, and so on and so forth. So, of course, for the appliances, we have 790, 790, and the values are very different as we go down, right? So, that's the kind of thing that we would like to find some remedy. So, also for the 30-minute interval, what we're going to do is, let's just copy this one. and course let's paste that let's have let's name this 30 30 minute so let's change this one into 30 minute 30 min and of course this one let's have this 30 min okay so let's run this and of course if you're interested to really see what is the mean of each hour let's have this okay so we have in here for the first hour that we have in our data frame, we have here 55. For the next one, we have 176.66667. Then we have on the 19, this one. And here is this one. So what about if we would like to see the values for our 30 minute int interval? Let's have this one. Okay, now let's execute this and let's see what the values are. So for 
the interval of 30 minutes so these are the different values so if we are going to examine the differences so we could see here that there is really a bigger difference so 55 56 53 of course as of this moment we could not really see the significance of these intervals we could not see properly how these differences can really affect the kind of processing of the algorithm and more values that we're going to have later on okay but the essence of setting these intervals is that we could also set which one of these values can be considered lower and which one of these values can be considered higher and this is why the next thing that we are going to do is very crucial for the succeeding steps of our project it's because this would tell us whether or not a certain amount of load is higher or lower so with this case what we are going to do first is that we're going to set our assumptions so let me first write here setting the assumptions as to lower or higher so in this part of our project the most important factor here is actually our common sense and logic so setting the relationship between the consumption and the load is very much significant to proceed so of course when the consumption is higher the load is higher too and when the consumption is lower the load also would be lower what we are going to do is that we're going to make a lot of tryouts and what do we try out in here so what we do here is that we are identifying which ones can be our boundaries or bases so that we can be able to identify whether or not a certain value at a certain point of the day can be considered higher or lower so this would depend on the appliances consumption standard deviations basically you're going to try each one of these deviations for you to be able to identify which of these boundaries can be used for setting the boundaries and also in this part of our project domain knowledge for energy consumption is really very important so let's just consider that we have already identified the points of our boundaries so what we will do is that we're going now to set the low consumption and the high consumption for the hour and 30 minutes so this is what we're going to do so for an hour consideration we can consider our hourly average to be low consumption if it meets this criteria so it means here that it is lower when a certain hourly average plus a certain frequency which is 25 in this case is lower than our average and of course in this case it's higher when that certain hourly average plus the frequency which is 25 in this case again is higher with respect to the 30 minute interval a certain consumption is considered low if it meets this criteria and of course for high consumption it is considered to be as such when it meets this criteria and once again the 25 25 25 35 here are the different points that are considered after a discussion with of course the experts and with the results of the different tryouts at this point this may seem to be a little bit boring because we could not see a concrete presentation of the outputs so for us to be able to seek properly and clearly we are going to plot the different values by hour by day and then by a month so for us to be able to do that let's first define some functions and let's define first hourly okay so now that we have defined the different functions we have daily the hourly and then the monthly so what we will do is that we can now go to presenting in plots each one of them so let's first have our hourly for us to properly see the increasing time element so let me first write here the label for this part of our code so plotting the hourly consumption to do that let's have this one hourly so what we are going to do is that we are going to identify the consumption for each hour of the day so that's why we have here 
we're going to have 24 hours, okay? Not the 12th one. So we can just use 24. Of course, in this case, you could use different big size. But in my case, I am using here 10, 9. So let me make some adjustments so we can see properly. Okay, so, so now let's do this one. Let's execute this. And let's see what's in there. So we could make our assumptions. So we could discuss our observations. So as you could see in here, in, okay, so let's make our observations out of this information we could see in the graph. I think this is a big one. So let's just change this one into, let's have seven. So we could see, okay, this one is better. Now, let's make some observations. So, if we are going to compare the different hours of the day, we could say that from this point, 22, going to 6, which is actually nighttime, the energy consumption is actually very low. That's very understandable it's because people are already in their bed, so they are sleeping at this time of the day. And the peak one here is 18. So from 16 going to 18, the consumption is picking up. The reason for this is, of course, people are already in their respective homes and they are either watching TV, they are using different gadgets, they are using air conditioner, they are using heaters and other appliances. This sounds so logical. So this is the situation for every hour consumption. Now, what if we're going to now examine each day of the week? Which part of the week has the highest and the lowest consumption? So let's check daily. Okay, so let's name this one weekly consumption. All right. So here um, we have actually set different colors for all days so for monday the color is pink for tuesday is red and so on and so forth and we've chosen this fig size just like the above so we could see the entire plot in our screen so let's execute this and let's see okay so based on the results we have your tuesday wednesdays thursdays and sundays the consumptions are not really high in variation. So especially with these three days, um, they are almost very similar. Monday, Fridays, and Saturdays, they have, of course, more or less the same amount of energy consumption. And as you could see, if we're going to take a difference of all of these days, we could not see a big variation of the energy consumption. So that's the kind of observation we could make out of this picture. This one actually appears so interesting. If, if you are examining every part of the day, then every part of or every day of the week. And what if we are very much interested in understanding what part of the month has the highest energy consumption? Let's do this one. Okay, so we have here and we are going to name this one the monthly energy consumption so let me write here first monthly consumption okay and we are actually setting this one in a heat map so we could see properly which ones are very interesting um of course just like what we had before for your design colors you could choose okay um I had that in our last topic, which site you could get this kind of color. So let's execute this and let's see what we could see. Okay, so now let's examine the results. So which of these days show the highest consumption? So we have here Monday, then we have here Sunday, which of the days of each month has the highest consumption. So for January, the highest energy consumption day is Sunday. For February, it is Monday. For March, this is 
Monday for April. This is Friday. And for May, we have a Friday and Saturday. If we are going to really examine deeper what causes these results, then maybe we could look into what are the activities people are doing during these days or what kind of weather these days have. So now we have the three features that we have already examined. We have for the monthly, we have for the weekly, and then we have for hourly. Now the next question would be this. Out of these three features, which of them can be considered for our modeling? Can we consider monthly? So let's take note that we only have May, April, March, February, and January recorded and the rest of the months are not there. So basically, if we only have these months, we cannot consider them as our features because they do not and cannot explain the trend for our modeling purposes. And of course, we can consider both of these hourly and days of the week for our modeling. And there you go, guys. We have examined how to process our new features. And we have also studied how we can choose among these features. So if you want to know more about this channel, please don't forget to click the card on your screen because we do have a lot of free data science courses. We have Mastery Machine Learning Algorithm, the Deep Learning Mathematics, the Data Science Algorithms, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn an upskill for free.